This is part 25 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why we need a service, creating a service, injecting and using the service, and finally, difference between a class constructor and ng on init lifecycle hook. So first, let's understand why we need a service in Angular. A service in Angular is generally used when you need to reuse data or logic across multiple components. Any time you see logic or data access code duplicated across multiple components, think about refactoring that piece of duplicated code into a service. Using a service ensures we are not violating one of the software principles, don't repeat yourself. The logic or data access is implemented once in a service and the service can be used across all the components in our application. Without the service, you would have to repeat your code in each component. Imagine the overhead in terms of time and effort required to develop, debug, test and maintain the duplicated code across multiple places instead of having that duplicated code at one central place like a service and reusing that service where required. Now let's look at an example of creating a service in Angular. This is the same project that we have been working with so far in this video series. Notice at the moment within our employee list component, we have the employees data hard coded. Instead, let's move this responsibility of retrieving employees data to a separate service and this component can call that service to retrieve the employees data. The employee service which is going to retrieve employees data is going to be in a separate TypeScript file. So let's place that TypeScript file within the employee folder. So let's right click on the employee folder, add and we want to add a TypeScript file. And let's name this file employee.service.ts. In Angular, a service is nothing but a class. So let's create our service class. Let's start with export keyword so other components can import and use the service class if required. Class and then the name of our service class. Because we are using the service to retrieve employees data, I'm going to call this service employee service. Next, let's decorate our employee service class with at injectable decorator. Before we can do that, we need to import injectable from Angular Core. Now let's decorate this service class with at injectable. We use this decorator to inject any dependencies into our service class. At the moment, our service class doesn't have any dependencies. So we may remove this at injectable decorator and the service will still work exactly the same way. However, Angular recommends whether your service have dependencies or not to always decorate it with at injectable decorator for consistency and future proof. For example, tomorrow if you want to inject a dependency into your service, you already have the injectable decorator. So all you have to do is inject the dependency. So for future proof, Angular recommends to always use the injectable decorator whether your service has a dependency or not. Next, let's create a method within our employee service class which returns list of employee objects. If you recollect, in one of our previous videos, we have created an interface which defines the shape of our employee object and that interface is present in this file, employee.ts. Notice here, we have an interface that defines the shape of the employee object. So let's import this interface into our service class file. So let's use the required import statement and then within the service class, let's include a method. Let's name it get employees. This method is going to return an array of I employee objects. For now, let's hard code the array of employee objects that we want to return. And within our employee list component, within its constructor, we have the array of employee objects that we want to return. So let's cut this list from there and then specify it right here. So at the moment, we have hard coded the list of employee objects that we want the service method to return. In our next video, we'll discuss how to retrieve these employee objects from a database server. For now, let's keep them hard coded like that. At the moment, we have our service created. Now let's see how to inject and use the service from our employee list component, which is right here. 
To be able to use the employee service within our employee list component, we will have to first import the employee service. So let's include the required import statement. Next, let's inject our employee service into employee list component. For that, within our class, I'm going to introduce a private variable, employee service, whose type is employee service. Let's also introduce a parameter for our constructor. The parameter name is employee service and type is employee service. And within the constructor, let's initialize the class private field underscore employee service with constructor parameter. In our previous video, we have discussed shorthand syntax to initialize class properties with constructor parameters. We can use that shorthand syntax to reduce the number of lines in this piece of code right here. So with the shorthand syntax, we don't need this private variable. And we also don't need this line within the constructor. Because we want a private field, we are going to use private keyword on the constructor parameter right here. This is nothing but dependency injection in Angular. So with this piece of code in place, when Angular creates an instance of this employee list component, it also creates an instance of employee service and injects it into this component. And we have this private variable which is initialized with that singleton instance and we can use that private variable to call the employee service method which returns us an array of employee objects. If dependency injection is not very clear, don't worry. We'll discuss how it works in Angular in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, understand that when an instance of this employee list component is created, Angular dependency injection system will automatically inject an instance of employee service into the constructor. So let's use this private variable underscore employee service. So this dot underscore employee service dot get employees. And if you notice from IntelliSense, this method returns an array of iEmployee objects. So let's use that value to populate this property employees. So this dot employees equals whatever this method returns. Finally, let's use the selector of this component list dash employee as a directive within our root component. So let's open our root component file, which is app.component.ts. And in the inline template right here, let's use the selector as a directive. With all these changes in place, let's run our application by pressing Control F5. Notice we don't see anything on the web page. Let's launch browser developer tools and investigate what's going on. And if you look at the error message right here, look at what it says. It says no provider for employee service. So basically Angular is complaining that it can't find provider for employee service. Now if you look at our employee service, the provider for employee service is this class itself. So basically this error means that we will have to register our employee service with Angular dependency injection system. And the way we do that is by using provider's property. So we know that we need employee service within our employee list component. So where we have this at component decorator, we also have a property for this decorator called providers. So here we specify our service class and our service class is employee service. So basically this is going to register the employee service with Angular dependency injection system. And this property is an array. That means we can register more than one service. And this is not a string, so don't include it within single quotes. So let's save this change and reload our web page one more time and see what happens. Notice now we see the data as expected. At the moment, we have registered our employee service at this employee list component level. This means employee service is registered with the Angular injector at this component level. So the service is available to this employee list component and to any of its children, but it's not available for the other components. The service can also be registered at a module level. When a service is registered at a module level, it is registered with the root Angular injector. 
So the service in this case is available for all the components in our application. We will discuss this hierarchical angular dependency injection system in detail in our upcoming videos. Notice at the moment we are calling the service from the constructor. The constructor is not the right place for service calls. Service calls are usually issued over HTTP to remote web servers. If the network connection is slow or if the web server is busy processing other requests, our service call could take some time to return with data. We do not want this time consuming logic within the constructor. So the obvious next question that comes to our mind is, what is the right place for service calls? ng on a net lifecycle hook is the best place for service calls. We discussed lifecycle hooks in our previous video. ng on a net executes after the constructor and is most commonly used for component initialization and making service calls. So let's move this service call to ng on a net lifecycle hook. Remember the steps to implement a lifecycle hook that we discussed in our previous video? The first step is to import the lifecycle hook interface, in this case on init interface from Angular Core. Next, we make this class implement that interface. Implements on init. And then finally, provide implementation for the interface method, which is ng on init. And then all we are going to do within this lifecycle hook is issue the service call. So let's move that service call from the constructor to ng on init lifecycle hook. Let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice it works exactly the same way as before. So what's the difference between class constructor and ng on init? A class constructor is automatically called when an instance of the class is created. It is generally used to initialize the fields of the class and its subclasses. ng on init is a lifecycle hook method provided by Angular. ng on init is called after the constructor and is generally used to perform tasks related to Angular bindings. For example, ng on init is the right place to call a service method to fetch data from a remote server. We can also do the same using a class constructor, but the general rule of thumb is tasks that are time consuming should use ng on init instead of the constructor. As fetching data from the remote server is time consuming, the better place for calling the service method is ng on init. As you can see within this example, we are using the constructor to perform dependency injection, which is usually quick, and the service call is issued from ng on init lifecycle hook. At the moment, we have our employees data hard coded within this employee service. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss how to fetch this data from a remote server using the built in Angular service HTTP. So, here is the employee service that we created earlier, and here is the employee list component that needs employee service. Notice here we are using the providers property of the component decorator to register our employee service with Angular dependency injection system. We are then using the class constructor to inject employee service into this employee list component. And finally, we are issuing the service call from ng on init lifecycle hook. Thank you for listening and have a great day.